Well, 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 look who's back for more. You are. So uh, here's the thing. Today, I'm going to show you how to do some cropping. And uh, there are multiple tools that crop in different ways. They do have different functions. And some of them have multiple little facets about them or multiple ways of being used and things like that. So uh, let me get this screen on and uh, show you guys something about that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to remove this. Here we go. So um, cropping, there are three main umbrellas uh, for cropping. Uh, one is the marquee tool. It, this is what it looks like big. I'm jiggling my mouse around it. If you click and hold it, uh, it's got roommates, and uh, you can get a circular one. Honestly, I'd never use the bottom two for anything, really, and so just don't fool with those. Um, any of the tools, by the way, they have like a little arrow in the bottom right. It means that they have roommates, which is basically all of them. Um, and so uh, the other um, crop tool is called the lasso tool. This particular one's called the polygonal lasso tool, but you click and hold it and it gives you the other roommates. And then the uh, third one right here, this is the magic wand. But again, if you click and hold it, there's some other options in there for you to use. Um, I, I typically use the magic wand. The quick selection tool is also, also helpful. Uh, so anyway, there's the basic ones. One thing that um, you may or may not know is uh, depending on what tool you click on, it's going to alter this stuff at the top. Like you'll see different things depending on what tool you're on. So if I'm on the move tool on my top, let me hide this so it, uh, we can focus. My top options are one thing. If I click on this tool, it gives me new options. I click on this tool, it gives me new options. If I click on the paint bucket tool, it gives me new options. This changes depending on what tool I'm on. So having said that, um, if I'm on the selection tool, it's going to give me these four options. One is a single square. One is two squares together. One is a white square and a black square. One is two. Don't even worry about that bow tie looking thing. Just it'll hurt your heart. You do not want to ever mess with that. This you will never. It'll never help you, and it won't. It'll just give you heartache. Trust me. So okay, the first one means this. The first box. Let me hide this. Means it's only going to select one thing at a time. So I can select this or this, but not both. If I go back and do this, it undoes the second one. If I click on this second option with the two little uh, code joined boxes. I'm going to click it on my top right here. Um, that means I can add as many as I want. I can add as many selections as I choose to. The third one, this one um, right here with like the white and the black one, one of those means minus. And so uh, let me click it on my screen right here, the third one. And it means minus. I don't need that after all. I don't need that after all. Um, again, the first one, the very first option means I can only select one thing at a time. So basically, one does one thing, one adds to it, one subtracts from it. So here's how that's applicable. So let's say that you're cropping out someone's hand and you um, accidentally only give them three fingers. Um, and you're like, oh, no, what? What? Why did I do that? And so if I uh, if I try to go back in and just get the finger, well, it's only going to get one thing at a time because that's the option it's on. So let me step backward. And um, I'm going to put, put it on the second option, the one with the two white boxes co-joins together. And that means plus I can give it another finger. Oh, no. I made it way too long. So I need to delete from that. I need to subtract from that. Well, I'll go to the third option. The, the black and the white one joins together. That means, hey, let me go around this part. I don't really need that part. You surround the part you don't want, and it goes away. And then you're like, oh, man, you know what? I put the thumb on the wrong side. Hey, I need to delete this thumb. So I put it on the, the third option. It has a little minus sign. And I delete this thumb. Then I go back and say, plus the second option, I'm going to add the thumb on this side. Here's the thing. You need to be real good at that. Not necessarily right now, but in the next 20 minutes, you should get real good at that. 
if you can use these things well, then you are well on your way. Uh, let me, if I wanted the, uh, the marchionettes to go away, I go to select, deselect, and they go away. Select, reselect, and they come back. By the way, basically what a selection does is it will only do something to the area that you select. So if I tell it to paint this in uh, solid black, it's only going to, it won't do it on the outside. Click, 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 nothing's happening. It will only paint in the part that I've selected. If I want to paint that part in red, I'll go on it. I'll paint it in red. Click, there we go. Um, I'm going to just throw this in the trash can. Um, watch this other thing, actually. If I make a new layer, I can put it on the brush tool and uh, see how it only paints inside the selected area. That's basically what it's there for. I'm going to deselect it and go away. But um, if you could be good at these three things in the next 20 minutes, that'll be so great. Use that that lasso tool. The polygonal lasso tool is better, I think. And um, you can get good at doing one thing at a time, at doing two or more joins together, and then deleting from them. So again, the first one only does one thing. The second one adds to it. The third one deletes from it. I'm going to show you one more time. I'm going to, this time, crop out um, a man. Here's a man with an arm. I'm cropping, I'm doing a leg and another leg and another arm. And, oh, no, another arm. I forgot. People only have two arms. And so I can put it on not the first option if i try to do anything now it undoes everything else it only does one thing at a time very one track mind if i put it on the third option third means minus subtract from i'm going to go in and say i want to delete this arm i want that arm out of there and then it turns out it's just shaped kind of weird tell you what i'm just going to delete both of those arms oh boy now he only has one arm I can put it on the second option at the top, the two white squares joined together, that's the add to selection, and then uh, click on that, and I can add back in the second arm. There we go. So that's how to, to use the polygonal lasso tool. Get good at those three things, will you? Um, get good at adding to and subtracting from selections by clicking on these options up here at the top. Okay, so uh, let's see here, select, deselect, and um, let me get through some things that we don't really need. Uh, okay, one thing is, if you're going to crop out a human, um, it's way easier if you can find someone who's already in front of a solid colored background. Um, that'll just help you out tremendously. If you find someone in front of like a, um, a detailed background, it's doable, but it's just a little more challenging. And so what I do for this situation, sometimes you can't help it. You take a picture of your friend and he's in front of a brick wall and he's not in front of the sky. It is what it is. So you have to deal with it as it is. I zoom in ridiculously close, um, maybe like that right there. I don't want to be zoomed out far and make little mistakes. I zoom in close and then I just use the polygonal lasso tool and I pick it out. Click, click, click. Click, click right on the line. Um, don't, and hit delete when you're done. Don't, um, don't do, don't be lazy about this. Don't, uh, it's close enough, good enough. It's, it isn't, it looks bad and very unprofessional that I nicked off a part of his ear. I don't want to do that. I'm going to step backward. I'm going to just click, click, click precisely, exactly on the line and when i'm done with one chunk of them like this part of his ear right here i'm just going to surround that part that i can delete and double click and now i can hit delete and get rid of that don't try to be a hero and go around the whole thing all at once there's no need to there's no rush so um just take your time and do well just uh one little chunk at a time click 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 hair is another story hair um that's another another episode altogether. Um, in fact, if you get to hear, just ask me in person and I'll I'll show you that. But uh most things you can use the polygonal lasso tool. 
Okay, so another thing. Here's another guy. He's in front of a detailed background. Um, it is what it is. Uh, just uh, take your time, crop it out well, and it'll be worth it in the long run. Here's a young lady who's in front of a solid color background. This makes our world, our lives a lot easier. So let's say I want her in front of a red background and I make a new layer and I paint the background red and I move it beneath her. So the thing is, I don't want all this white stuff around her. I can use the magic wand tool for this. The magic wand tool um, selects any solid color. So if I'm on the, the layer that she's on and I click with a magic wand tool, this area, I, let me show you. Do you see how the marchionettes are exactly where we need them to be? Um, if I hit delete, boom, they're gone. Over here on the other side, again, I'm gonna use the magic wand tool. Here's one problem. It got a little bit too much here. Her hair is so close to the color white that it, the magic wand tool thought, well, I need to crop that out too. So I'm gonna go to select, deselect, and this time on the magic wand tool where it says tolerance at the top, let me show you what, what that is. Um, at the top, eh, one of these options on down, um, if you're on the, the magic wand tool will, will be tolerance. And so let me go back up to this young lady and uh, I'm gonna change the tolerance. It was on 30 and that got too much. They got more than I needed. I'm gonna change it to be Let's just try 20. So I'm going to type in up at the top 20 and then select it again. That did a lot better. If Let's see. Can you see that? And now when I hit delete, it crops it for me. If I wanted to, I could have cropped her out with the polygonal lasso tool. Um, it would taken longer, and it wouldn't have done really better. And so uh, there's that. When you crop anything, one helpful thing is you can zoom in and do you see there's this little white residue that's kind of left over? What we need to do about that is double click the layer she's on, not here, that'll rename her. I'll just, I'll name it girl. But if I double click on the side here um, and go to inner glow, don't click the box because the box doesn't change the settings. Click the word, the word's inner glow. And uh, I'm going to click on this white here and tell it, you know what? Uh, glow inside with the color red. That's what color the background is. And uh, I'm going to tinker with it, make it normal. And I'm going to make it a little more opaque. And I'm going to make it a little larger. I'm just I'm just kind of tinkering with it a little bit. And uh, I'll show you the difference here in a second. You can make it where it's lighter or darker, bigger or smaller. You just kind of make it what it needs to be to, to fit your needs. I'm going to click OK. Let me zoom back out so you can see the difference. Um, this is before and this is after. It just kind of softens and makes her look more like she's part of the, the scene instead of obviously cropped out. The ironic thing about cropping things is you want it to look like it's not cropped, right? You want it to look like it's natural. So uh, sometimes you can double click the layer, get a little inner glow to fit in with the background that it's that's around it. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Um, Okay, here again is a background that's gonna be a little bit challenging to crop out. If you can find a background like this that's already solid, that's gonna help you out. Or someone standing in front of like a blue sky or something like that. Here's someone in front of a background. Um, well, I don't know, let's see. The Magic Wand tool might do decent on this because it's, it's not solid white, but it's not, um, it is contrasted enough that it might do a job. So again, I'm gonna click on the Magic Wand tool Click the background that I want to get rid of. Ooh, let me show you this. It's very, very spotty. Let me change the tolerance. That's not getting enough, so I'm going to increase the tolerance. I'm going to try uh, instead of 20. Let me try uh, 40. We'll see what it gets. Again, I'm just going to click the side here. Let me show you what it gets. Pretty spotty again. I'll up it one last time. Let me try like 80 uh, for the tolerance. And again, I'm going to select it. That's, that's not going to do a terrible job. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit delete. And uh, what it didn't get, I would just go ahead and use the polygonal lasso tool and, and finish off the rest. So that's basically what those two things are for. The polygonal lasso tool will let you manually crop anything you want to crop. 
select anything you want to select. The magic wand tool will get any solid color um, and select it for you. So uh, let's say that here's a picture of me um, and I'm holding up a hand. Um, this is pre-cropped. This is a decent crop. It's not great. It's not terrible. You can't distinguish my fingers. This is a bad crop. Don't be a bad cropper. Don't be a bad cropper. You be a good cropper. Um, if you huh, if you do anything with this, you could spend the next year of your life working on this. It'll always be a bad project. It's it's too late. This is bad. If you work with this for uh, the next week, you might could make it a decent project. Give it a background and some. I'm getting a phone call. I think it's spam. Um, so here's the thing. Okay, let me get this off of the um, the screen sharing for a sec. That wait a minute, the light turned off. Hold on, I'm gonna pause it. This is a, I don't know how to pause it. Uh, I'm just gonna tell you. So here's the thing. If you have steak, and that steak, um, you don't do much to it. You just sprinkle a little salt on it. It's going to be good because it's steak, no matter what you do to it. The flip side is, if you have poop, and you work with it for the next year with Bobby Flay, the best iron chef that has ever existed, and you marinate it in who knows what kind of sauce, and you put all kind of spices on it, and you put it on the the grill, whatever you want to do to it, you can work on it for the rest of your life, but it's still poop and it's always going to be poop. That's what it is. So as that applies to graphic design, if you start off with a good picture, it's very easy to make a good project, right? Your final product is going to be good because you start off with a good picture. If you start off with a bad picture, you might as well just hang it up. Just go get another picture instead. Because that bad picture is always going to be poop. Whatever you do to it, you're just putting makeup on poop. Don't do that. Just, if you have a bad picture, throw it away and go get a better picture. Does that make sense? This is very important. Very important stuff. Okay, so uh, let me do the screen share again. And uh, here we go. I think we're, we don't have too much more. Okay, here's the thing. Here's uh, some sea life. And on the layer above... Here are some windows. I want to be able to see through those windows to the sea life. So what I could do is use the polygonal lasso tool. And again, just click, click, click. Oh no, I, I didn't get the whole thing. Let me show you. I got just a fraction of it. So remember, if I want to get the rest, I put it on the second button so I can continue on. This is one way I could do it. And I just kind of continue and add to the selection and then uh, hit the delete button. That's one way. The other way is I could put it on the uh, magic wand tool and select just one of these things. Now, what you could do is select, hit delete, select, hit delete, select, hit delete. I don't want to do it that way. I'm going to step backward and show you a little something, something. So what you could do is you could select one, go at to the top to where it says select and down to similar, select, similar, select at the top, down to similar, and it gets all of them. And now when I hit delete, they're all see-through to what's behind it. And what's behind it is this, this C picture. So if you want to do it real, real, you can double click it and go to drop shadow and make it draw a little shadow on the background. You can, uh, you know, make it where it changes colors. You can make it where uh, it changes opacity. You can adjust this as much as you want, um, but there's before and there's after. So. All right, for Abraham Lincoln's head, I drew a picture of Abraham Lincoln, and um, we want to crop him out. We want it to be where Abraham Lincoln's head is uh, <laughs> is overseeing the ocean. I don't know why. And so what you don't want is have all this white stuff around it, right? That white stuff is in the way. And so what you do is, since it's a solid color, don't use the polygonal lasso tool. That's that's for cropping out difficult things manually. Don't do that. That's not the best way. Best way is to use that magic wand tool. It's a solid color. I'm just going to, let me hide this, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, I'm just going to click on the white and hit delete. And that's it. It's done. And so um, 
let's see here. Okay, if you want to do something like this, where you put um, someone's eyes in the word eyes, or you know, put a picture of tiger stripes in the word tiger, put a, a fire in the word fire, things like that. Okay, here's the thing. I have a picture I drew of my cousin. I have the word eyes. I've already typed it out. This is a little bit tricky. I'm going to put the picture above the words directly one layer above the words. It has to be the hat. It can't be up here somewhere. It has to be the layer right on top of the other layer. So the picture goes on top. If I right click it and I say create clipping mask, it's going to see through it like a window. And uh, no matter where I move it, it'll always stay within that window and I can make it to where uh, I can see the eyes just as much as I choose to. So if you wanted to, you could double click the layer with eyes and say stroke outline, something like that. Don't click the box, click the word. When you click the box, it doesn't change the settings. Uh, and then you can make it just stroke as much or as little as you choose to. If you want that to go away, click the eyeball beside it. So um, there's some stuff. Okay, we're almost done. If you want to, uh, let's say you have the word S, uh, the word spot, S P blank T, and you want there to be a spot in in the spot. Okay, here's the thing: the layer that has the uh, the spots on it, these are solid colors. So I'm going to use the the thing that selects solid colors, which is the magic wand tool. And I'm just going to select. Uh, we'll get this spot. Eh, we'll get this spot down here at the bottom left. I'm going to select it. And uh, if I want to get some extra speckles, remember I can click on this second tool or hold the shift button. It's the same thing. And uh, that's probably enough. And uh, now that I've selected it on a new blank layer, I'm going to make a new blank layer. I'm just going to paint it in with a paint bucket tool. And uh, here's the thing. I can move this. I can resize it. Command T or edit free transform. And uh, I think it mostly reads as spot. Be careful that that the shape represents the letter well enough. You know, you don't want it to look shaped like an A and say spat. But let's, I mean, let's say, if that's what you're going for. I was not. I wanted it to say spot. Okay, here's the thing. One more thing, and then we'll just do a quick review and we'll be done. I want this picture of fire to go inside the word fire. So remember, the picture is the hat. It has to go one layer directly above the word. When I right-click it, um, I'm going to say create clipping mask and it sees through like a window. I can move it however I want. If you want to be cool about it, you can have a flame kind of coming out on this. This let me, uh, let me just use the magic wand tool, select the black and get it out of there. And then uh, let's see here. We'll just um, get the uh, eraser. I'm going to get a blurry eraser. And uh, kind of fade it in a little bit, resize it. Command T will resize or transform. And there's just a little flame kind of coming up out of the uh, the side of it. You can move it wherever you choose to. And uh, let's see here. Okay, here's the thing. If you can be a ninja with these things, well, well, mm, real quick, one more thing. We'll, go, we'll do that in the review. Okay, here's the thing. If you can know how to use the polygonal uh, lasso tool well by selecting something, if you can know how to add to the selection by clicking this button up here, which on my actual screen is, is right here, I can add to the selection. If you know that when you click the third option up here, the black square with the white square, that deletes from it. So I'm going to click on mine that that subtracts from the selection or go around the whole thing and subtract, just make it all go away. Um, if you can be a ninja at that, you're in pretty good shape. If you know how to use the magic wand tool to um, not only select something, but how to increase or decrease the tolerance. So like if I wanted to um, select her face, it gets this much of it. But if I change the tolerance to only 20 um, and redo this, it gets a much lesser version of her face. If I change the tolerance to be 200 and then try to select her face, you know what? It just got the entire thing 
it just cropped out the whole thing. So um, be good at using the polygonal lasso tool. Be good at adding and subtracting from selections. Be good at using the um, magic wand tool by changing the tolerance and being able to crop out solid colors. Uh, know how to select deselect to make selections go away. Um, be sure that uh, to to crop out things, you know that you need to zoom in very close and uh, be very picky by clicking precisely on the line. Uh, only get one chunk at a time and hit delete. Don't try to be a hero. Just crop out one little part at a time. Uh, let's see, what else do you need to know to be a ninja at this thing? Um, know that with uh, with selecting out um, something that has multiple parts to it, you can use the magic wand, click inside one, which it only got that right there, and go to select similar, and it'll get all of them for you. Um, that's probably enough for today. If you can do those things, you're in pretty good shape. Okay, so I'm going to say one last time the things that you need to be good at. Just be sure that you go back and rewatch those particular parts that, that you have weaknesses in. Can you use the polygonal lasso tool? Can you add to the selection? Can you delete from the selection? Can you deselect it uh, when you're done with it? Can you use the magic wand tool? Can you change the tolerance of the magic wand tool? Can you um, go to select similar to get multiple parts that you selected with the magic wand tool? Um, and then with pictures, always use steak, never use poop. If you have a good picture, your project's going to be good, whatever you add to it, even if it's only a little. If you have a bad picture, your project is always going to be poop, and it's you can mess with it for the rest of your life, but you will be messing with a bad picture for the rest of your life. So don't do that. Okay, I think that's probably enough for today. Um, the one argument that I have for today is uh, the showman, the greatest showman, showman, that's how you should pronounce it. Some people say showman, showman, showman. It's very snooty and it doesn't make like snowman, snowman, showman. It's not snowman, showman. Don't, don't be that. 